My love-hate relationship with my body began at a very young age, uh, like most girls, but it didn't actually begin the way you might think, not with fashion magazines or peer pressure. It actually began, of all things, with sports. Now, I was not an athlete as a kid, cute kid, uh, but definitely not an athlete. I was bumbling, I was awkward, I was heavy, I was big for my age. So much so that my mom actually joked that there was no point in teaching me how to swim because I had no natural buoyancy. I would just sink. <laughs> my dad used to tell me we need to teach you how to walk on your toes because I was so heavy footed that I would make so much noise going down our hallway on the wooden floor, he would get kind of irritated. So he would teach me how to walk on my toes. Now I still had the heart, I had the drive, I wanted to play every sport. Unfortunately, I was too tall for gymnasts, to, for gymnastics. I was too slow for soccer, too uncoordinated. I was too much of something for a lot of things. Now, in high school, I faced everybody's biggest fear, which was phys ed, but I was smart. I was not gonna be wearing school-issued gym clothes. So, I found a loophole. I took a 6.30 a.m. weightlifting class instead of PE. Now, during this class, we had to measure our stats. I was 16 years old, five foot nine, and I was 225 pounds. And at the time, I had never stepped on a scale, and I didn't know how much that number would come to uh, represent me, define me. So much so, in fact, when we tested our aptitude for that class, the rope, sit-ups, things like that, I went across the monkey bars and it was about two-thirds of the way through that the coach told me, you can stop, that's fine, hun. That's good for a girl your size. <laughs> now, around that time, the revolutionary thing called the Atkins diet came out. So my parents said, you're going on this diet. So I did. And I ate bacon and cheddar wedges for a year. <laughs> anymore. I was 175. I was entering college and I found something called track and field. In that college I threw the shot put, the discus, the hammer, and the javelin, and I found girls just like me with big bodies doing big things, and I was so happy to see that. Girls just like myself. But there was always that nagging feeling that maybe if I was a little bit leaner, I'd be more efficient. If I had a little less body fat, I'd be more explosive. If I weighed less, I'd be more valuable to the team. So I got down to 157, lowest I've ever been in my life. It took a lot of work. My teammates, super supportive, never criticized me when my strength dropped. They just told me I looked awesome, and I was super happy to hear that. Now, in 2007, I started competing in Scottish Highland Games, and from that time, and from 2011 to 2016, my weight yo-yoed, variance of about 23 pounds. But in that time, I never actually got smaller. Never got smaller. Some other numbers changed though. I've been to seven Highland Games World Championships. I've been to seven national championships. I've represented my country five times in, <clears throat> in three different countries, four different competitions. However, there's this thing called Instagram and hashtag Transformation Tuesday and countless images of sculpted lean bodies that I wanted to achieve they were doing the things that I wanted to achieve, but they were succeeding where I was failing. Now, about a year ago, I started competing in strongman. I have some different numbers now, too. I've pressed an 80-pound dumbbell over my head. I've carried a 450-pound yoke on my back, and in November, I'll carry a 275-pound Husafel stone on my chest because I can. <laughs> now, despite this, even in the world of strength sports, where bigger literally is better, I'm always going to be stuck between two literal and figurative weight classes, heavy and super heavy. Now I realized I was done with this mindset about a year ago when I got an email from a nutrition coach after an $800 nutrition plan, half my mortgage by the way, that read, there's no reason you shouldn't lose weight if you're actually trying. And I stopped. I just stopped, not competing. I stopped trying to shrink, and I told myself the actual words I used were, I'm going to let my body take up space for a while. And it hit me. That's my mantra. That's the way I want to live in every endeavor, not just in sports. And I believed in that, that mantra so much that I actually got it tattooed on the part of my body, my leg, that I was most scared of getting bigger. So if there's anything I can take from that experience, it's that I am going to take up space. When I teach, when I throw, when I compete, 
When I lift in every endeavor, I'm going to allow myself to exist. It's what my body's meant to do, and I'm pretty good at it.